Hi, I'm Sandy Parentosi, and I've developed a set of circular templates to help hand builders be able to create forms based on a circle. There are 24 templates in the set. The way it works is that all of these templates stem from a central point, and any cut comes off of that central point, and that is what can give you an accurate uh, conical form. So the templates are flexible so that you can see the form that one might make. It can be used this way or this way. And then as you go out, the, the various forms can be used for bowls and uh, in com combination with each other create a lot of different forms. So if you take this and you stack it with a few other parts this, that match up, then you get a variety of forms. The blue templates are coming off of the same center point as the original template in the center. And this just shows that if you cut a circle out of that circle, you get a truncated cone versus just a regular cone. Along with the set are a set of disks that are divided into quarters and into thirds. And this is to help you divide space up if you are decorating or if you're going to be cutting into the clay. And you can also use these in different sections to create spouts and lugs for the sides of pots, which I will be showing in the video. On this table, I have each of the templates and the parts that each of them make right beside them. So you can see it's a variety of conical parts that if you make two and three and four of each, you can stack to make um, a wide variety of forms. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I want to show is how to roll a slab. If you're not used to rolling slabs evenly, then just get yourself a couple of sticks. The big paint sticks from your home improvement center are really a perfect thickness if you're just beginning with this technique. So you put your slab in the middle of the two sticks and you roll back and forth. And then you have to lift the slab up and turn it so that it doesn't stick down onto the board. Otherwise, it won't be able to get any bigger. And you just keep rolling. until you, your rolling pin hits the sticks and that ensures that your slab is going to be an even thickness. So the first thing we're going to start with is a bowl, a simple bowl form using template F, like in Frank, I guess I would say. So now it seems that the rolling pin is now on the sticks. So that means my slab is at the highest part of thickness. So we'll set this aside. And we'll lift the slab and begin to make the bowl. So template F is what I'm going to use. And I will explain the line on that template in the next demonstration. So I'm not texturing, I'm not dealing with any surface information here because my goal is to just have you uh, develop forms. There are a lot of great videos out on surface decoration. Kristen Kiefer has a really good one. She goes through many different techniques. And on Ceramic Arts Daily, there are so many great videos to learn just about everything, but also surface decoration. So after you cut out the template, you want to make sure that you bevel the edges. And the way to do that so that they come around and connect evenly is to really what you're trying to do is divide the thickness of the slab in half. So just try to imagine half of that slab and you put your knife in and you keep the knife point down on the table and that will make sure that you have some meat at the end of your slab. You want to make sure that you have a nice thick edge. Same thing on this edge. You come over, you come under, and you cut that right in the center, and then keep the knife down on the board and pull it through. This is sticky today. But it's good to work with soft slabs because then you can get more out of your form. You can push them out more. And then you'll want to score 
and I use a little serrated rib that's cut up and I just use water or a very very thin slip because I really want the moisture to get into the grooves also because the clay is so soft you don't need really thick slip like you do when the slabs are more leather hard I work on drywall boards sheetrock which is a great thing to make a wear board out of so you just pick this up so I'm just taking it I'm picking it up and I'm pulling it around and I'm overlapping those edges and you want a good half inch of overlap because if you do want to push this pot out and give it volume which I'm going to do you want to make sure that you have enough clay at your seam to be able to give it a good volume. So I'm just pushing, really tacking that down, pushing from the inside and then gently pushing from the outside. And then I'm just going to flip this over to connect the seam even more. I'm just making sure that that inside seam is really well connected. I'm going to use a wooden tool with a soft end and just really push that clay over. I generally don't try to cover up the seam on the outside. I like the idea that it's surface information. If you want to cover up that seam, I will show you how to do that later on because you really want to wait till the uh, pot is uh, leather hard before you start dealing with that. So now I have the basic F form and I'm going to flip this back over again because I want to put the base on it. And so in order to put the base on it, that's what some of these purple templates can work for. Now I like to turn the base out a little bit. You can have a base that goes straight if that's your preference, um, because it's all up to you and, and how you see your pots being done. I like to just turn this out just a little bit if I'm making a bowl to just give it this nice little gradual curve. I'm just trying to tighten up. You want to make sure you really tighten up that seam at the top. That's the only place where I'll make sure that that's smoothed out. So I have the three and a half inch uh, purple template that turns into the base of this. And so I just gently turn this out a little bit so that you have this being nice and flat for attaching your base. And I'm just going to use my thumb to do that. And then I'll set this on top and make sure it fits and it's a good fit. And now we'll cut out a piece of clay for the base. I also use uh, biscuit cutters, which are great for cutting out discs of clay too. And some of the forms that the templates make have circles or bottoms that are smaller than the amount of sizes that I have with the purple templates. So it's good, it's handy to have a set of the, um, the biscuit cutters. You can get them at uh, cooking stores, you can get them online. And I'm just going to trim that like that. And then usually I'll just take this edge and roll it so that any, any clay that gets dragged up by the knife gets smoothed out. And then we'll just come back here and we're going to score. You always have to score and slip each part that you're attaching. It's kind of like when you use epoxy, you need to do both sides. So you're scoring the rim of the base of the pot and you're scoring the bottom and you're just slipping, dampening. And then I just like to run my finger around there to just smooth that out from any of the scoring marks. Same around here. And I'll just lay this on top. and push that down. And then I'll just run my finger across there. And I'll 
I'll give this a little bit of a paddle to make sure it's really well connected. Then I'll dampen my finger because that edge right there is very sharp and you don't want to have any sharp objects, any sharp edges on your pots. So take your finger and smooth that edge so that it's a nice soft edge. And then clean that up. Then we're going to flip this over and we're going to give it volume. Now if you like a bowl that has uh, a straight side, then you would smooth out your edge and you would be finished. On the inside, you just use a tool and basically you're just pushing the clay, supporting it with your outside hand, just pushing on, to the, on the clay where the wall meets the base of the pot and that's enough to seal it. And now we're going to push this out. So I usually push things out with my fingers, larger pieces I might use a rib, but I'm going to show you both ways. So I use mostly these two fingers to push out. You're always supporting with your left hand. I'm going from the bottom and I'm pushing out and I'm just turning the wheel, turntable, and I'm just gently pushing out. Just do it gently because you're not going to do it all in one round. You do a few rounds. So that's how I would push this out with my fingers. And each time you do it, make sure that you start to deal with your rim and keep it round. This is also a good um, way to start to soften that edge, which eventually you're going to have to do. And each round you kind of give it a look and then you can go a little bit further. I'll do one more round with my fingers and then I'll, I'll show you how to do this with a rib. Because sometimes if you're not used to pushing pots out with two fingers, it might be easier for you to use a rib. But each time you're going to give this little finishing on the rim. So if you want to use a rib, um, this, these are Michael Sherrill ribs, uh, Sherrill mud, mud tools. They're really great ribs. I use uh, many of the different uh, sizes and uh, thicknesses. They come in different thicknesses and each thickness has a different color. This is a really good one for pushing out pots. So I'm just going to go in with this part and I'm going to go, I'm putting my hand around it and I'm just going to push against it. And this is also a good thing for those of you who don't like seeing the finger marks. I actually like seeing the finger marks, but if you don't, uh, then use a rib and then you won't see the finger marks on the pot. So then this bowl is pretty well pushed out for just a simple bowl. Now what I was talking about stacking the parts, I have another one that's already pushed out. And this is just an indication that I can't make every pot that this, uh, these templates will make because the variety is so wide. But this just shows you that if you make two parts and you stack them, you can start to make bigger forms. And then you kind of tweak them and get them to a point where you can stack them so that you can develop a teapot and on much bigger forms just by stacking them all on top of each other. So that just shows you how you can do that. The having using the sticks ensures that your parts will all fit together. That's really important when you're doing this. You need to make sure that all of the parts will fit together. So if your slabs are all different thicknesses, it, it becomes a little bit harder. So now I'm just going to um, smooth this rim out. Take my hand on the outside and I'm going to... So basically I'm thinning it a little bit. I'm pushing against my outside hand. Okay, so now that my bowl is pushed out, I'm taking the um, five and a half inch disc and I'm using the dotted lines which divides it into thirds. I'm going to scallop the edge of this bowl just to show you that you don't have to keep it a straight sided. I'll use a marker. This is just a water-based marker that kind of has a brush tip on it and you can get those at most art supply stores. So I'm marking off the thirds from the, where the dotted lines are and then I'm going in between where I marked so that I divide everything. This bowl will be divided into six evenly spaced segments for scalloping the edge. And scalloping is really fun and it's pretty easy to do. So I just take a ruler or a stick of some kind and you push in like that. And you, I usually put one of my marks on the seam because it's a place, a starting place. I just push that in. And you just do that all the way around. And then you go and you can just accentuate those scallops. 
push them out a little bit so that you have a scalloped bowl. And that's how you would make a bowl from template F and how you would scallop it if that's how you choose to finish it. All right, now that we've made a bowl with template F, I want to show you how you would make the bowl larger or make it smaller if you wanted to make a smaller cup form or a smaller bowl form. So you see this line here. I have determined that that line on the pot, and this is how you would do this, you would just pull the template around to see where you think just say you want to make a cup. This is a good size for a cup. You just pull it around. You draw a line there. And then you would stop your slab there. But it's really important to make sure that you're always cutting on the edges of the template because they are all coming off of a center point, which is what keeps your cone accurate. So what you would do is you lay your template down and you just draw in, I'm just drawing right now with the edge of my knife, you draw in right up to that point where your line is for the cup, for instance. And then you lift your template up and you slide this around right in place where you've just made your line to the edge of where that pencil line is for the cup that you want to make. So that would be the smaller version. And then you make the cup in the same exact way that you make the bowl. It's the same process. It's just a smaller format. By the same token, if you want to make this or any of the other parts larger, I may flip this over so you can have a larger slab. And you'll find you might want to make them larger or smaller depending on what you want to make. You do the same thing. You start with the existing template. Just use this tool. And you draw to the end of the existing template. And then you take your template and you shift it all the way around to however big you want this to be. And then you take this and you draw from that point to the end. This makes sure that all of your cuts are coming off of the same edge of the template, all going toward a center point. You can also make things taller. If you want to make things taller, then you want to make sure that you have a slab that's big enough to accommodate the taller size. And you want to draw a line from the edge of the template. Get right on the edge of the template. And you draw a line here. And you draw a line from the other side. What you're determining is your center point. All, remember, all of these come off of a center. So now you'll have an accurate large, taller piece because you have the center point here. And then you grab your compass. Remember these? So what I've done is instead of using the pencil, which won't go out as far, say for instance, I want to go, uh, I want to go up to here with my, let's say I want to go there. I want to make this D template a little bit taller. You take your compass and you put your point into your center point and then I had this is just a dowel that fits in here and if it if you don't have anything that exactly fits you could use a, a chopstick or something like that just tape it in and you set it down and then you just draw your circle out like that and then you carry your lines up from the template like this this way you know that it's going to be accurate if you want to make that taller. So then that piece, then you would cut here. So it's, if you like the D shape, 
but you want to make it taller. Then that is the size of the slab that you would use to make a taller part. The D part is that. If you want to make it taller, that's how you make it taller. So just to rewind a bit, if you want to make it shorter, you just keep it in place going up to your point, longer, take it to the end and slide this around in place. Taller, you need to find your center connecting point based on the sides and then use your compass to make it taller. All right, now we're going to move on to another template. This is template P, and this template can make cups, tumblers. You could stack it to make bottles. It's a very nice size, and it's, it just makes a lot of variety of form. So I have the straight-sided uh, version right now, and I'm going to put a bottom on it because this can be a base, and I'm going to take one of my biscuit cutters. I will dust some cornstarch on there, and that's just to take the top layer of moisture off so that the cookie cutter or biscuit cutter doesn't stick to the clay so much. Just pull that away, just like in the bowl. The same basic setup that I used in the first piece, the bowl, happens with all of the templates. You're just setting, setting them all up in the same way with the bevel cut and then an overlap. So then we're going to score this. Now I'm adding a base to this, but then we'll also show how this can be used for multiple forms just by stacking. And run your finger around, get it clean. Set that on there. And you can paddle it, make sure it's nice and tight. And then again, you want to always soften your edges. And generally, in, with something that has a flat bottom, you also want to go in and just gently run your thumb across the bottom so that it ever so gently goes down a bit because things tend to dry and get a little bit bowed if it's a flat bottom. So now we have really just a straight-sided tumbler. And we'll, if you cleaned up the edge, that's a perfectly acceptable form if you like a straight-sided form. But I'm going to show you how to push this out. I'm going to be pushing this out just all, all together. I mean, all sort of pushed out evenly from top to bottom. I'm going to show you a couple different versions of how this can be used. So if you want to give this a little bit of volume, you just go in like we did before and use your fingers or the rib, whichever you like. And each time, you just want to take and straighten out your rim. As you push out, the rim will want to kind of go inward. So to keep it true to size, you just push it back out if you don't want it to go inward. Let's just do one more round. And then we'll take this around. I'm very careful to make sure that all my edges are nice and clean and I clean up my slip. In the video, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing all that cleanup because I'd rather spend the time giving more information, but just know that I'm very uh, careful to make sure that the craftsmanship is good. So that pushed out slightly makes a very nice uh, tumbler form. Now you can take the template H and make a foot ring for this. So this template makes the foot ring. So you can just tilt this over and you'll see that just by adding that, if you slipped and scored that on, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to show you how that can also become a neck. That gives you a tumbler with a foot ring, which just elevates it a little bit, makes it just a little bit more um, of a refined form, I think, with the foot ring on it. You can also use that instead of making that be a tumbler with a foot ring, you can use this this way. So there's no right side up. They're all just parts that you build with. So you can use the form this way, and you can take your 
four inch disc to make a base for that out of clay. I'm not going to do it because again, I just want to show information. You know that you would slip and score that and add it on. And then this can become the neck of a vase. And if you wanted to add little handles, you would just cut out some wedges. This is a very quick handle. What this video is meant to accomplish, my hope is that it's just explaining the set of templates in a way that has you wanting to try to explore. So I want to give enough information so that you understand your options, but I want to make sure that there's a lot left over for you to fill in and make it your own. So what I'm doing here is I just cut a little wedge out and I'm just going to, with my fingers, soften that. Same with this. We're just going to soften that. Do it on both sides. And this is anytime you want to make like a little side handle. So then this vase can ha you can attach these little handles and then that can become a vase form. If you want to ruffle the edges, remember everything is interchangeable. So you can attach those on. You can make a ruffled edge on this just like we did on the bowl. You can also now take these parts and stack them. So just say this was our tumbler with the base. And if you wanted to make a bottle form, you just start to stack. So that is two P templates and then the H template put together. I usually line my seams up because it just, it's the way, for me, it's just a natural way to have um, things line up. Then you can take um, another template. I'm using template N, which is the smallest um, blue template which makes a form like this, and you can start stacking to create an even larger form. You can have a fat neck like that. This would be the D template. Or you can use the long neck, which is the C template, to create an even longer neck. And remember, you know, you can interchange these, so this could just as easily go like that, and then you can put this part on top, which is template E. So you just keep stacking forms and taking them apart to see where you'd like to be. So that's why I recommend that you make a lot of parts so that you can explore form just by using the parts as um, building blocks. So this is just a shorter version. So you get the idea of how you can make multiple forms just by alternating what parts you use on them. So we can take this basic tumbler form and turn it more into a cup that has a little bit more volume. So I'm going to take this away and on this one what I did is this one starts out as you're just pushing out the whole way up a little bit. Then to get a form like this what you're doing is you're then pushing out just this sort of top two-thirds to get this. So you just same way you're just pushing it out I'm just going to give it one more little push out to give it a little bit more volume. And then I like to pinch the edges out ever so slightly because you don't, personally I don't like cups where the, the ends go in, the rim goes in. So you just push it out and then gently with your thumb just push that sharp edge into it so that it's a nice smooth transition. Now to figure out a handle for this, usually I just take my scraps to figure out how big of a handle I might want and I just bunch them up because it's important to think about uh, the relationship of the handle to the cup. So I'm just going to put my scraps together just for a rough estimate of how big I think the handle wants to be. And I just kind of form it and say, yeah, that's a good start. Better to have it be a little bit bigger than not big enough. So then I'll take this and I'll lay it out on a board and get a slab because this is going to be a basic strap handle. It's one that I use a lot. And we'll, first we'll just slice off to get that right length. And then I like to give the handle a bit of flair. I'm going to cut this rectangle so that it's roughly the same uh, width at the top and the bottom. And then I'll just curve it in a bit just to give it a little bit more flair. 
it's I like to have something that has like a little thinner in the middle, a little wider at other ends, and then you always want to soften your edges. And you can make this even a little softer edge by curving the bottom, just cutting the bottom like that. And we're going to soften the edges. And then we'll see how it fits. You're also going to pinch this top end and this bottom end. You want to have the most surface attachment area that you can. And then you model your handle and you get it. I usually put it where the seam is. And you get it into place. And then you have to let it set up. Uh, clay is a waiting game. So you let this set up. And I have one already uh, stiff enough. So you want it to be stiff enough so that you can handle it. And you'll set this on here. And you want to just make sure that you have it in a place that uh, looks good. You want to check it from that angle. And you want to check it and make sure it's straight at that angle. And then it's usually sticky enough so that you can stick it on there. And then use your knife or your needle tool to just draw a little line where you are needing to attach that. And you'll score. And you score here. And remember everything, all the attachments need to get scored. And then dampen. So by pinching it, you just get a bigger surface contact area. And you set that on there and set that again. Double check that it's straight because it's easy to make it be crooked. And then just really make sure that you're pinching that into place and that it's really nice and secure. Same with this. So there you have a cup that has a swelled out belly, high, a high belly swelled out, and a form that is just swelled out from top to bottom. And then you can add foot rings and stack them to suit your needs. So now let's make a bowl that's a little bit larger. We're going to use template I for this bowl. Same technique as we did on the first bowl. It's all the same uh, set of techniques to begin the bowl. So I had said I would show you how to get rid of a seam. If you don't want to have your seam there, get your serrated rib. And you just cross hatch over your seam like that. And then use the smooth part of your rib to smooth that out. And you just keep doing that until you don't see your seam anymore. And that is best done when it's leather hard. So now we have this bowl. And this is an, an, a case where you will, you might want to put a foot ring on there. So I start with template G. And just like we shortened things early on, where I showed you how to shorten it, you would flip this over. And then you would take your template to see where it needs to fall to fit onto your base. So basically what I do is I'll pull this around until it lies within the circumference of your base because you want to allow the thickness for whatever the thickness your slab is. So however thick your slab is, that's how much space you want to have between the template and this. And then you trim it and cut the slab out as we did before. So this is the foot ring that now will fit this. And you can lay that on top. And what I did here is I just pinched out the base. So I just took it and I pinched it out to give it a little bit of flare so that it wasn't so straight up and down. So then that gives you, I'm not going to attach it right now because this is going to turn into a batter bowl, but I just want to show how using this, a footed bowl is a nice elevated form. And then you could get some of your other parts in. This is template J the largest of the blue, and you can start creating other forms. That form can then turn into a teapot. It can turn into a bottle or a vase form just by stacking. This is template D, and then back to the smaller template N. So you can see how by stacking, combining things, you start to be able to create forms that you might not have even been able to think of in your head because you have some building block tools to do it. So that creates a, a really nice bottle form. So I'm going to take all these down because 
what you can also do is use this as a straightforward bowl. We're going to take that base off and we're going to make a batter bowl. So a batter bowl has a spout and a handle and that's where your smaller templates can come in handy. So for the spout, just trim off a straight side of your slab, take the three and a half inch disc and lay it on the edge where the uh, intersects the half point. And you just pull, you just cut this out. And then what you want to do is you soften this. Let me just move the bowl. You soften your edges, just as we soften all of our edges. And then you're going to pinch, pinch it thinner at the point here where the liquid or the batter is going to exit the bowl. And so you just pinch that edge thinner there. And then you pinch the edge. First pinch it, and then what you're going to do is you're going to pinch it down a bit. So you're kind of curving it. You're pinching it up or down, however you are facing it. And then you pull this around to make your spout like that. So that you, this creates the attachment point. Okay, now I've taken one of my discs so that I can divide. I'm just going to divide this into two sections just so I know that my spout and my handle are going to be opposite each other. I'm going to attach the spot, spout first and then we'll do the handle. So this spout has been setting up a bit. Remember, things have to be set up so that they're easy to attach. And I'm just going to get that on there. Just sort of get it into place. And Trace, you can use a needle tool or you could use a marker. It's a water-based marker, just make sure they burn out when you um, test them on one of your pots. But usually the water-based markers burn out pretty easily. And I'm going to score. And then I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to hold my knife downward because I'm trying to thin the clay down as well as cut it off. So I'm going to cut that out. And then there will be some thickness in there. So I'm going to take my knife and thin that down just by shaving that away in there. Because that will make it easier to have a nicer transition when you attach this. And then I'll score the underside of my spout. This is the one I had setting up that I could just put it right on there. And the bowl is pretty set up too. It has a little bit of give. But you want to make sure whenever you're putting parts together, that they're stiff enough so that they don't lose their form. That's really important. And you almost always have to be working on a couple of different forms because you have to wait for things. So I'm just going to get that in place like that. And then really press that together. Like that. And come in here and if you need to sponge that off. Then on the inside, I'll just take a tool and smooth that out. This is a good tool for that, any rounded tool. So I'm just going to go in here with this tool and compress it. Just join those edges. I have to face it here this way. And I'm just going and, and I'm not so much trying to obliterate a line. I don't mind a little bit of a line there. It's Again, it's surface information of how the pot was built. But I just want it to be nice and clean. So I'll just smooth that until it's nice and clean. And then connect this a little bit into there. And then use your sponge to soften that and to make that edge a nice clean transition. And then for the handle, you do the same thing, only you're using, and then this is a personal uh, thing. I wanted the handle to be a little smaller than the, the volume of the spout. That's all up to you. Same thing, take the three inch circle, you put it at the edge of your slab, you cut half out. And you're going to smooth this down like we do all the edges. 
And then on this one, you're going to take your thumb and you're just going to start to curl that around. So that it, you, the goal is to be able to get your hand your, under it for when you're lifting it up to pour all of that good pancake batter out onto the pan. I, I have a couple of batter bowls and they are indispensable in my kitchen. I use them all the time. So now we have that puffed out and again you can tweak it and, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to, what you want to do is you want to create an attachment edge. So you're pinching and you're kind of doing a thing where you're creating an edge that can then go against the pot. So it's similar to the spout in that you want to create something that can get attached. And I have one ready to put on here and I'll go directly opposite. So now this is nice, this is stiff. I can attach it. You want it stiff, but you also want it a little bit pliable so that it can actually, you can push it into the pot. So I'm going to go directly behind here and you can put it low, you can put it high depending on where you feel your hand fits best. And then you can trace it. And score. And score. And slip. And attach. Get it in place. And I find it easy to sort of work away from me so that I can use my hands inside the pot to push that on. The thing with the templates is that you don't have to make pots with them. I am a potter, so I make pots with them. They were developed for the work that I make. But I have students who use them for more sculptural forms because of the ability to be able to break them down into parts. I'm just smoothing out any of my rough points. So then anything you need to clean up, you can take a tool like this after it sets up a bit and you just go in there and you do a nice edge to clean any of those attachments up. You can just go in with a tool to strengthen and also clean up those edges. So that's a batter bowl made with template I. But remember, we stacked various forms to be able to make bottles and other forms that you might want to make. So we're going to continue on with using uh, template I. Remember, we just made the batter bowl, which was formed with the pot setting this way. But if you turn it this way, I pushed it out just like we pushed out the bowl. So that was the bowl form. Uh, but I've added a base. This is just a flat base. The six inch slab creates the base. You flip it over and you have the body of a teapot. The first thing I'm going to make is the lid. So this is a very simple form. Basically, I cut out a three and a half inch disc. You saw me do that previously. And then you want to roll. You'll roll that edge as usual. And this time you want to make sure that you soften your edges all around. That's, you do that for everything that you cut. You want all your edges to be soft. And again, I'm working quickly here, but just know that they would be very nice and soft. And then we'll get some cornstarch because we need to, we're going to be using a ball to push that in. And I'm going to get a piece of foam. I'm just going to set this down for a minute set this aside and I'll get this is just a styrofoam ball that you get at the craft store set the disc on a piece of foam and you just push in around one way and around the other way and that creates your lid so that sets on there like that generally you want a lid to be um, overhang your opening 
so that when things all shrink that it doesn't uh, get too small. So just make sure that it, it's bigger than your opening all around. So for the flange, the flange is the part that goes on the lid that keeps the lid on the pot. Um, I like to make a lot of cone flanges. So for the flange, you want to make sure you start out with a nice thick slab. Basically, this is the same thickness of slab that I've been using all along. And there's a method here to getting it to fit right. So what I'm using on the flange is a four and a half inch circle. Basically what you do is you measure the opening of this, of your top. This is in case you're making something with a bigger opening so that you have an idea of where to start off. So my opening is two and a quarter inches wide. So if you double that, that's the size of the template that you want to use for the cone flange that fits inside. So we have a slab with a straight edge cut, and again, you're coming off of the half mark of the four and a half inch circle, and you trim this out. Now this is the only edge that I'm not going to smooth out because this is actually going to get attached to the lid. So you pull this away, but what you are going to do is you're going to take from the center point of this and you're going to bevel, just like we beveled everything else. You're going to slice one side and then you're going to flip it and go from the center point out and bevel the other side. This is because this is going to get formed, curled around and formed and you're going to score, flip it over and score and then you slip and you pull this around and you overlap just like you do when you make any pot that starts this way. I'm just going to tack that, tighten it up and that in turn comes here and it fits right in there and it should be a little above like that because it's going to attach to your lid which sets on there. The nice thing that happens is this becomes the same natural slope that this is. So you don't have to cut and trim it to fit the lid. It will naturally just get fit right on there. So then we're going to make our other parts which would be a spout and a handle. And for a spout for a lot of straight spouts like this, I use template M for a, a short and sort of stubby spout. So what you want to do is you want to roll this slab thinner because you don't want to have a spout that's really thick. And generally I'll roll it a little thinner on one end, which is the exit point of the water. So if this is my spout, this is where the water is going to come out once it's formed then you want to roll it thinner on one end, a little bit thicker on the other end. So that when you trim this out, it's a thinner. We'll just cut this. And you're going to bevel this just like you do your pots. You're just going to lightly bevel it. So you're just taking a lit, all you're doing is taking that edge off like that. And you're going to score it. You're going to flip it over and you're going to bevel the other side because it's going to wrap around. So you've beveled that and scored it. Then we're going to clean the edges and we're going to pinch this edge because you want it to be thinner and that helps cut the flow of liquid and then we'll slip and you can use a dowel I have a dowel that I just filed down the point with a some sandpaper and that helps that can help you um, wrap this around and bring it around so that it connects like that and you almost always have to tweak a spout uh, to get it to fit the pot that you want. And just make sure that 
you go in and you sort of seal that and you seal it like that. Just press, you can even set it down and tighten it like that. And just make sure your edges are nicely joined. And then you come back to your pot and you need to get a good placement for it. And so again, like I said, you have to tweak it. So I think that's a pretty good placement, but this is on the round. I have kind of ovaled it a little bit to be able to get uh, sort of a nicer shape. And then if you need to trim it a bit, you can just take this. Basically what you need to do is trim this so that it lays onto the pot a little bit better. So you just kind of trim that thickness around so that it lays better. And you can pinch it out a little bit and then set it on here like that and then set it up, uh, set it aside to uh, stiffen up. The next part we'll do is the handle. So again, I'll take a piece of scrap and I'll decide how big I think the handle wants to be. And I'll grab my spout that's setting up just to get a sense of what it looks like. So that's a pretty good start for a handle in terms of the size. So I'll start with that and I'll just lay it out and I have a slab ready. You want the handle slab to be uh, thinner than the slab that the pot is built with. Um, half thickness, you know, good, a good fat eighth of an inch is usually pretty good for a, a handle. And this is my length right there. So just like we did with the cup handle, we're trimming the top straight and the bottom. I can take this away now because I know I have enough length. And you want to have at least a two and a half inch width in general for a handle because that gives you enough uh, so, you know, if you need your ruler, you just pull it out. You just want to make sure that you have enough. This is a hollow handle. You want to make sure you have enough clay to join with. And then you want to take your roller. And I'm rolling these edges so that I don't compromise the thickness of the handle. I don't want that seam to collapse. If I cut it, it might collapse. And then we'll flip it, bevel the other side. And you're just going to score. I'm not slipping just yet. And then you want to get a piece of foam and a dowel of a different thickness, a little fatter. And you just push into the foam to help bring that around like that. And then you can actually just start to pull it around. And now I'll put the slip on. Otherwise, it, it kind of gets messy because you're handling it a lot. So slip, slip. Okay, and then you just um, we'll give it another dampening. You just curl this around so that it's overlapping. Like that. And then give it a roll just to tighten it up. And then you just form it. So we'll come off of the foam. We'll put our teapot back up here. And we'll get a sense of how we want this to set on the pot. And that's looking like a good size by the time we uh, pinch this and attach it. So when I say pinch, what you're going to do is you're going to pinch this end, again, a little bit flatter because you want to create more surface. I'm kind of just putting my thumb in there. And then the same thing down here, you're kind of pinching it a little bit, spreading it out just like we did for the cup handle so that it has a nice connection point like that. And then you want to let it set up. So now I have all the parts that have been setting up that I made before and we can start attaching things. So this is all too soft to attach to what I just made. So we'll pull the other parts out that have already been setting up. This is all ready to attach, so what I do is I lay my cone in here and 
trace it with my pen or you could do it with a needle tool and then give yourself little tick marks because if you know it fits in there right there then you want to make sure that after you take it apart to slip it that you get it right back in that spot so we'll just slip slip and then attach Get it right in where the tick marks are. And really compress it. And then let the slip ooze out a little bit, that's okay. And then just tighten it up with a tool like this. Just go in and just compress all around that seam so that it's a nice tight edge. And then clean it all up and then that sets on here like that fits nicely uh, this is template E I made for a knob so we'll get that on there I'm just going to center that on here and make sure it's centered and you know knobs are you can make so many different knobs um, but this is just a simple one using uh, the templates and we'll score so I've marked the center off and we'll score And score this and I'm scoring it just sloping it just a little bit with my with my um, serrated rib just sloping it in a little bit so that it fits that curve that it has to go on and then slip and slip I always get the lid and the knob in place because that helps with the placement of the spout and the handle if you have that part because it's all you know you want to take into consideration um, all the various parts and how they're fitting together and then you can take your sponge and clean that up and also go in with this tool to tighten that up and also on the inside you can just tighten that up it's hard to see the inside but basically I'm just going in and compressing against where the attachment is so now let's attach our spout and handle these have been setting up. So these are, again, you want, you want the parts to be, especially the handle, you want it to be stiff, but, but pliable enough so that you can readjust it. Um, the other one was way too soft to attach. So before I attach anything, I get a sense of where this is going to fit and how the spout is going to fit. So that looks like a pretty happy arrangement right there. It's really kind of a happy pot, isn't it? Um, so we'll go ahead and what you want to make sure that um, the spout and the handle are directly across from each other for function and I'm just going to make sure that that's lined up and I will get my marker you can also use a needle tool anything that marks off where it has to be it just makes it a little bit easier when you're attaching okay and then we'll get this placed here directly across might as well do it all at the same time we'll lay that down and then you're going to take this and we'll trace this as well and right after I trace that I'm going to just score it and I do this to remind myself not to cut on that green line I've made that mistake on other things and so this just tells me that that spout's getting attached there and then we can cut out that hole and you could do strainer holes or you could do one big hole whatever you like the it doesn't matter as much unless you use loose tea that the strainer is going to uh, strain the tea and then you'll see there's some thickness there and I generally will just go in and just shave that down just a little bit just so it's not there don't worry about it. if it falls in it'll come back out and then you're going to score this so it's generally a good idea to have your the pot and the lid and knob in place before you do these two things you really need all the parts made before you can start attaching things because tea, a good teapot is all about the relationship between the parts and making sure that it all works together and then just make sure that it, you, it looks good from this end and that end make sure it's straight and then just 
get that on there and then you can take your lid off so there's your lid that's a pretty cool form in itself so you take your lid off and I don't know if I mentioned this but you want to make sure that the flange part is thick that it has some weight because that's what keeps it on the pot and now you can go in and you can really push against the inside you want to make sure that that spout is really on there and just get the edge of the inside really pushing in so that the spout is really well attached we're not making a trick teapot here we don't want any leaks and then just come with your finger and pull that around and double check everything and just make sure it's really sealed that can't stress that enough and then I'm just going to go in with my sponge and just soften just in case there are any sharpness because when you clean this pot anybody who's cleaning that pot you don't want any sharpness in there and then we'll put the lid back on and we'll get the spout get the handle in place and I have my marked off and you're just going to score just make sure when you're scoring and you can cross hatch too some people cross hatch which is going back and forth in different directions I generally go one direction but you want to make sure that whatever direction you're using here you want to use here so then you're going to score this so you, what you're trying to do is get those grooves to come together to make a good bond this is a hollow handle so we'll want to make sure to put a little um, pinhole in there and I do that usually after it's attached so we get that before you commit and before you really press that in make sure it's directly across from the spout I'm going to have to adjust that a little bit and look at it from here look at it from here and do the same thing take the lid off and then really get under it and push that in like that make sure you have a good bond I like seeing the when the slip starts oozing out of the edges that's a good thing because that means you're really getting a good tight bond and you can always when that slip dries up just go with the tool and push it back in I'm going to get in here and if you can't get inside um, I make a series of these tools these are just um, uh, balls on a stick you can get these balls they're really some of them are doll heads at a craft store and you can also get dowels there they're really good to get in places where your hands can't and so you just push against the ball and you can make them in all different sizes just anything that can get in there to compress and then we'll put a little um, I have a little skewer here but you can use a needle tool I also use a needle tool you just go in and you just poke a hole so that the air escapes when you fire it and then the cleanup is basically just getting a tool and compressing all your attachments and usually I'll wait until the slip is uh, drier to do that just cleans it all up same thing you go all around your spout to compress it tighten it up clean it all up okay so you want to also put a hole in your flange because that is also a hollow space so again you can use a skewer or just a needle tool and just poke a hole and that just lets the air escape in there it doesn't have to be a big hole so there's your teapot okay now we're going to take the N template and the L template and we're going to make I've made a couple of each of these and I'm going to show just the possibility of what stacking these can do I make a lot of candlesticks this way I am going to put a base on it so um, this base is the H template and because this is flat I need to taper this a little bit because it's going to get attached to something that is tapered so you always want to take that into consideration so I'm just going to use the flat side of my rib and I'm just going to all I need to do is slope I'm sloping this downward so that it snugs up onto the angle of that pot so I'm not really going to put all these parts together I just want to show how you would again because we're dealing with parts so I would take these two and again I line my seams up I showed you how to get rid of the seams if you don't like it and 
they would snug right in there, line your seams up, that's a good place to start. And then if you used the next smallest one, which is the N, and you stack that, and you snug those on top of that, then you can start making bottle forms and candlestick forms. Uh, this is a form that you could make, for instance. You can turn this away this way and stack that for a high stick. Or you can just put the candlestick here. So there's a series of smaller ones. This is E. This is the same thing we made the knob with on the teapot. So that just makes a nice um, stacked candlestick holder. What I'm going to show you is how you would join these because when these are made, this is sloped. So you really need to flatten those. You need to wait till they're a bit stiffer and then I'll show you how to flatten them. You can either flatten them on a piece of sandpaper and drag, you know, circular, grind it away like that, or you can use your metal rib and you can just sand it down like that. You can use, you can use your serrated rib and just start to shave it down like that. And you do that on both sides. And don't be afraid to really have at it because it's stiff. So when you get both of those flattened, it's easier to do this than to try to slice them. So either use sandpaper or your rib. And the sandpaper you want to get is the, um, the bigger grit. So you don't want to use real, real fine sandpaper. So, and so you're just flattening them like that. And then just dust off, dust off all your edges. And then you can, you would score them and then they would snug together a little better once you flatten them. And then once they're flattened, you can then join them together like that. And sometimes I just make a nice clean joint. Sometimes I add a coil in there as a decorative element. It just all depends on what you like. Okay, the last thing I want to show is how to combine uh, rectangles with these forms to create an even larger uh, palette of forms. The way that you can measure this to figure out the size of the rectangle you would need for this particular part, I'm using N right now, is to take a coil, roll out a coil, skinny coil, and just lay it on the edge, the very edge of this template. Basically you're trying to measure the round edge so that you can fit a rectangular part into it. So then you take that and that is how wide your rectangle needs to be. So here is a rectangle that is this size, just magically appeared. And so this is the size that I need. Uh, I've beveled it, beveled it, and scored it. And now I will... This I've already um, flattened out for attaching. And I'll just dampen these now. And pull this around. And before I commit, before I really seal that up, I want to take my cone part that I made and just make sure that that fits. So you see, by measuring that end, you get, this just opens up a whole other series of work by combining the rectangular form. So if you measure the edges of all of those parts and make rectangles, and it doesn't matter how high. This could be just as easily, it could have been a low one. So the height doesn't matter, but the um, circumference is what matters. So then you have that, and then you would attach these, same thing. You would uh, score, slip, slip, 
score. And then you can take the various parts again and start to build from there, just like we did before. Bottle forms, jug forms. You could add handles and spouts. Now again, you'll have to tweak the spout to fit this. Basically, if I was trying to tweak this to fit this pot, I would get it to the angle that I want, get that pot to the angle that I want, and whatever this space is here, that wedge, I'd cut out of here, like that. And then you trim that. And again, you'll have to do some tweaking. And then you'll fit this onto this, but that's a good way to start. So you can make a variety of forms combining the rectangles and the cone forms. Well, thanks for spending this time with me. I hope that the templates open up your world of form. Bye.